Well hello, today we'll be looking at a soldering iron, but before we get into it, a quick reminder to please like or dislike this video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, click the little bell in the corner to find out when I'm uploading content, and exercise, it's good for you, because at least some of those will really help me out. Anyway, getting back to the video. Yep, this is the TS100 soldering iron, kind of famous and kind of well known now, but I hadn't used it and I wanted to take a look at it from my point of view so here it is. First impressions when I picked up the box is they've left it out it's so light it feels like there's nothing in there. Let me show you what I'm using at the moment is this thing not a particularly good one it was a bit of a, a cheapo from eBay I bought it because it's like oh look it's got this controllable wheel but essentially I just have it cranked up all the time. Um, it takes a long time to heat up and this tip tends to fall out. Um, aside from that everything's great. So what I know about the TS100 is that it's got a little microprocessor in it and a little OLED display and it should heat up very quickly and apparently it weighs about the same as a feather. So let's get it out of the box and actually see what we've got here. Well first up we've got this little envelope on top inside of which we have a tiny little allen key and a couple of uh, screws there. And then we've got some fairly brief instructions about how to actually put it together, how to update the firmware. It says straight away to go and get the latest firmware and put it in ready. It feels like you um, you take this hex file and you copy it across to the thing. We'll check that out later. And here's the actual main event. Here's the tip and it's got that nice sort of, I don't know if you can see that, chiselled edge to it. Um, and here's the main unit itself which has got, it It literally weighs nothing. <laughs> the, the I think the tip weighs more than the actual unit itself. It's got a couple of buttons labelled A and B. It's got this little screen, let me just take the screen protector off. Uh, it's got a DC power input here. Now this takes like 12 to 24 volts and the more power you put in the faster it will heat up. Yeah, that's not much to it is there, tiny. Let's get this together um, and let's see if we need to upgrade the firmware and we'll take it from there. Join me in a second. Okay, hopefully we can see this. I'm struggling to make the light work here. I still need to set myself with a, an overhead rig. Anyway, starting off, assembly, pretty easy. Just loosen off this bolt. Pop that in and it'll go all the way in, like so. And then just tighten up that bolt again. Okay, if we now plug it in like so, you should see it says config. If we go to the computer screen here, is we get this config.txt file that has various bits here, like startup temperature, working temperature, sleep time, order time, temperature stop, not sure what that was. Uh, that's the voltage it turns off at. And I can't remember what those two are. Um, and we can change that config file by editing this file and saving it. If we hold down A, we seem to get the little logo. If we hold down B, we get version 2.18. This is quite significant, because if we look up at the latest version, it is in fact 2.18. OK, so I've just got a 12 volt power adapter, which I'm going to plug in. And I get the little logo, I get the version, and it's basically saying, press the button to turn it on. Until that point, it uh, it should be off. So let's press it. 25C. What is it, me or does it keep rebooting? Okay, new power supply. Let's see if it's any better. Now, one thing to note, we seem to have um, some information about the amount of volts and the temperature. If we keep pressing that, we can go through various options to change those settings we saw in the um, setup menu. Okay, so let's try pressing the button now. That's better. And it's heating up. Well, this is fairly fast to say this is only on 12 volts, I have to say. Wowzers. 152. <laughs> and it is already at 300 degrees. Yikes, that is really quick. What's it gonna be like for... Whoa, instant melt. That is um, extremely fast. <laughs> so I can also change my working temperature if I want to, going up or down. And if you press both buttons for three seconds, it should go back to standby. 
Yes, indeed. And if I now press B, it should tell me the temperature of the tip as it's going down, and you see it going down to temp there. Oh, I want you to stay in that mode. It's uh, cooling down fairly quickly. <laughs> Obviously, it has to uh, lose all that residual heat. I'm fairly impressed that it, it went up to temperature quite that quickly, just with 12 volts. Um, the, the obvious thing to do is to make a connector to a, a LiPo battery and something like a 4 cell would obviously give you something like 16 volts which will get up to temp even faster. So I know I haven't actually shown any soldering yet but I found that the firmware you know it was okay but it hadn't been touched for a year so I had a look because this is open source stuff and I found this code uh, the Raylim uh, source code. And I had a look at uh, a sort of video he had explaining what he did and it seemed really cool. I like the fact they had this little sort of boost button um, so you could set it so if the you wanted the temperature to boost quickly you could do that. Uh, so I went ahead and downloaded this. There's a good video explaining it on from the uh, GitHub page here and he's got the hex files available in lots of languages if you're in well an English speaking country you want the ts100.en I have already downloaded one ready and all you have to do is literally take the hex file you got and pop it on that funny device file that appears and what you will get is that device will then well on my Mac the device disappears then comes back and then it turns into a .rdy, a ready file, and that means it's installed successfully. So I quickly wanted to go through why I installed the Raylin firmware, and it just seemed better than the original, essentially. If I plug it in here, I'll just go through some of the settings you have available to you. Um, and the main one was the power source. I'm plugged in with a DC power source, and there's a low voltage alarm which comes at something like 10 volts but of course if you were plugged in on a, a LiPo battery that would be different so this firmware allows you to specify using like a 3S, 4S, 5S, 6S or DC and works out the cell voltage or what the alarm should be based on the cell voltage in the soldering settings as well you've got something else quite interesting called boost mode and it's there as being enabled with a boost temp of 390 degrees now my basic temp was was it 300 350 but if I'm doing some like really big piece of cable I want to up the power and rather than have to set the temperature I can just hold a button in and it will boost it up to that temperature uh, it's got sleep mode so it's got a sleep temp for 90 seconds and a sleep time out of one minute. This is about, this has got an accelerometer in it as well. So if I, I was to just leave it there and not touch it, it would go down to um, its sleep temp, which is set at 90 degrees and it's got various, um, you can you can alter how sensitive that is if you find out it's not going to sleep easily. Uh, then it's just user interface stuff, which is the temperature units and bits and pieces like that. Scroll speed, etc. And I won't go through all the options, but um, yeah, just to show you what it looks like when we're actually running it. So obviously this is the iron heating up, and that's the little up arrow saying it's heating. This is saying it's on power, and obviously there's no difference with the way it's sort of the how quickly and stuff it heats. So we'll just let this get up to temp. What's it set to? And you can still change the settings. So if we, if we set it to uh, 300. We know we're already just about there. So it's going to stay at 300 C. And as you saw there, I can I can easily set my temperature around. Uh, but what I can also do is, as I mentioned, that boost button. So if I was doing something and it's a great big thick cable and it just didn't want to melt, I can just hold down my A button and it will start to boost. And you see there the temperature start to fly up to me. What did I set it to? 390? Uh, so very handy when you do it and of course you just let go it goes back to its normal temperature and the sleep modes I was mentioning which I have to try and do without burning anything if I just leave it there so you see it right now it's just coming down to the normal 300 degrees temp and you see there we've got the Z's so it's going into 
a sleep mode which should bring it down to 90 degrees. If I was then to pick it up, you see it starts heating back up again because it's detected our movement. So all pretty pretty cool things. And then we should be able to turn off just by holding down the B button and you can see it start to cool down. So I thought I was going to do a whole bunch of like, here's me soldering some stuff, but whenever I film myself soldering, because I've got old man eyes, I need to get in really close. Basically, you can normally just see my head, but essentially it's just me soldering bits to pieces. I mean, here's some quick collection of, of little bits and pieces where I'm using this thing, but I've had this a few weeks now and done it on a whole bunch of soldering jobs and it's still holding up really well. And I'm beginning to sort of think, this is the old school, this is the future. Now it's not quite the fact that if you've got a soldering iron and it's working perfectly well and you're happy with it, I wouldn't say throw it away and get this. But if you're coming up to, you know, you don't particularly like your soldering iron, it takes ages to heat up and it keeps cooling down every time you do something, get one of these instead of replacing it with the old one. Because this doesn't seem to cool down at all when I'm soldering stuff, even on 12 volt supply. I mean, you can, it would heat up a hell of a lot faster if I was using 4S, 5S battery, but even just like a 12 volt uh, DC, this is heating up really quickly. It's got that little boost button to get even more heat into it. And it's just keeping that heat there. And it's just really good. Obviously it's really quite dainty as well. So it's really easy to get into things. You know, the, the soldering heads lasting fine. I'm trying to, you know, take care of it. I've, I'm using one of these things now to, to clean off my tip instead of a sponge type thing. But if you do, kill your tip somehow then you can you can exchange those and you just take those out and put a new one in and there's different shapes so this is the the sort of classic chisel shape but there's the pointy ones and all different ones so yeah i'm really quite impressed really happy to have this and of course if you're out on the road or racer or somebody and you you want to be able to just solder on the go then obviously plug a lipo into here and you're, you're away with it so it's very impressive so yeah i'm very happy um if you're in the market for a new soldering iron i really think check this out this is the ts100 this was supplied me for review from gearbest so thanks very much for that and of course there'll be links down below from where you can get this um i'll be using this in the future uh, for all my things so if anything else interesting happens with it i'll be sure to update you but in the meantime i hope that's helpful and thanks for watching see you next time bye bye well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.